All right, so today I want to introduce you to the Butterbee ball python. The Butterbee consists of two genes, the butter and the spider, and you get a really interesting effect when you combine those two genes. If you look at butter just by itself, usually it's a pretty high contrast, really bright yellow, kind of a bright and flashy snake, and the spider by itself is pretty bright and flashy too. Usually it's a really bright gold, and when you mix those two genes together, you get a really interesting effect where you get almost an azanthic looking snake. It washes out all the background. And you, sometimes you get almost a white background, and a lot of times it has a really high contrast. It makes for some really impressive combos. And kind of the other thing that's interesting about the Butterbee is when you work other genes into the Butterbee, it actually has a really dominant visual effect. So a lot of times you'll still get that almost azanthic looking snake when you mix other genes into the Butterbee. So I'm going to jump over to the internet and I want to show you the potential of the Butterbee Ball Python. All right, so I'm gonna jump over here on morphmarket.com and I wanna show you the two genes that make up the Butterbee. And the first one I wanna show you is this one right here. This is a Butterball Python. And the Butter is actually a, a single gene. It's a co-dominant gene. If you breed two Butters together, you get a Super Butter, which is an all-white snake with blue eyes. It's actually in the blue-eyed leucistic complex. And a lot of people will say that the Butter is the same thing as the Lesser. There's kind of a big debate whether Butter and Lesser are just two different lines of the same gene. Some people say the butter is a little bit brighter than the lesser and some people would say they're pretty much the same gene and kind of the interesting thing about butter is if you breed it with anything in the blue-eyed leucistic complex you'll get an all-white snake with blue eyes and there's quite a few genes in the blue-eyed leucistic there is the mojave the butter the lesser the phantom the mystic the mocha and the bamboo there's quite a few genes that you actually combine with butter to make the all-white snake and here's the other gene in the butter bee and that is the spider and take a look at this the both the butter and the spider are really super bright and flashy snakes and I'd say this is probably one of the brightest spiders that I've seen super bright gold and a lot of times you can't even imagine how bright and intense these are just looking at pictures until you actually hold some of these snakes in your hand and they are just absolutely stunning and the spider is actually you kind of have to watch the spider because a lot of people say if you breed two spiders together it's a lethal combination so you want to avoid breeding two snakes together Together that contain the spider gene. But here's what happens if you work spider and butter into the same snake. Take a look at this crazy thing. That is the Butterbee. And at the first glance I was thinking this must be some kind of an azanthic combination. Usually azanthic strips away all the color and the azanthic is a recessive gene. You need two copies of the recessive. And in this case you only need the butter and the spider. And let me tell you if this was actually some kind of azanthic combo it would cost hundreds and hundreds of dollars probably probably over five or six hundred dollars for a snake like this and you actually look at the price on this one this is kind of crazy this one's only a hundred and fifty dollars pretty crazy you can get into this really really inexpensive both the butter and the spider have been around a long time and the genes are widely available and that's you know usually it's a kind of a supply and demand as far as the prices and if something is in an abundant supply <laughs> even though it's a really high demand sometimes it can really drive the prices down which is kind of neat you can actually get into this project for a little or you know just a little bit of money compared to a lot of the ball pythons so take a look at this I actually pulled up another butterbee so so this one is super white like almost an azanthic and sometimes you can get some that have quite a bit of yellow in them some are a little bit more clean on the side some have a little bit of pixelation and some of them like in this case you actually see a little bit of yellow kind of coming through it still kind of has that azanthic look between the butter and and the spider and if you actually took a butter bee and you bred it to something else in the blue-eyed leucistic complex like a lesser or something like that this is what you'd get you'd end up with the all-white snake with blue eyes this is a blue-eyed leucistic so it's, it's, it's a little bit complicated if you actually make the white snake it's so visually dominant that it hides all the other genes in the blue-eyed leucistic you can't tell what other genes are in here as a matter of fact if you look at the genes and the genetics on this one this one is actually a butter and a lesser combined both are in the blue eyed leucistic complex you get both genes in the snake and you get the all white snake with the blue eyes and this one's also possible pinstripe possible ghi possible spider and possible yellow belly and a lot of times unless you actually know what you're starting with for example if you started you know like with a super ghi and you know everything has ghi or like a super pastel where you know everything has pastel it's almost impossible to tell exactly what in your blue-eyed leucistic. 
So Leopard works really well with the Butterbee. It's a really amazing combination. Leopard is considered to be a dark jean. You mix it with a lot of jeans and a lot of combos. It really darkens the background in most cases. And it's kind of interesting. A lot of times when you work Leopard into some of the brighter jeans like Coral Glow or Banana, sometimes it won't actually darken it as much as some of the other dark morphs. But the, the Leopard is really awesome because it really scrambles up the pattern. It's more, I'd say it's more of a pattern enhancer than anything. It makes for probably some of the craziest combos. I'd say probably as far as co-dominant jeans, Leopard is probably the number one king of combos as far as mixing it in with anything else. It makes really impressive combos. And here's what happens if you work Leopard into the Butterbee. Take a look at this crazy snake. And this one, when I first saw it, I was like, that looks just like a crazy Azanthic. And you know, when I'm thinking Azanthic, I'm thinking, you know, like, like a thousand dollars for a snake like this. And I haven't even looked at the price on this, but I bet it's not that high. This one's like $500. That is pretty crazy combination between the leopard, the butter, and the spider. And you get this crazy pattern all on the top. And sometimes these leopard combinations can kind of be really variable. Sometimes you'll have like stripes with the leopard, and sometimes you'll have kind of a jumbled up pattern on the side. As a matter of fact, if you actually mix leopard with lesser, which butter is another version of lesser. Usually the leopard lesser or the leopard butter will give you really strong striping right on top of the back. And that's, I think that's where the stripe is coming from on this one. As a matter of fact, if you actually mix another gene in there other than butter, well, I guess you have to mix butter or lesser for this combination. So if you mix a leopard, uh, I, I can almost guarantee. Usually, and you know, if you actually mix these two together, I'd say about 50% of the time you end up with a stripe snake. You don't always end up with stripes when you mix leopard and lesser or leopard and butter in this case. So this is the Enchi. The Enchi is a really awesome gene. Goes good with just about any combination. Essentially what the, the Enchi does is it really reduces the pattern. You can definitely see on this one, usually like on a normal wild type ball python, you kind of have these Roswell gray alien heads on the sides. Like this one right here with the two little eyes. And usually Enchi will really reduce that to a, a more or less degree depending on the line and the version of Enchi. Sometimes the Enchi will really reduce it into almost tiger stripes. And a lot of times, Enchi will bring in a lot of the orange color in a lot of combinations, which is really one of the cool things about Enchi. Kind of reduces the pattern and brings in a lot of a bright, flashy color in a lot of combos. And here's what happens if you work Enchi into the Butterbee. Take a look at this. This is a really interesting combination. And you can kind of see a theme here. All these combinations look almost a xanthic like really wiping out the background. It's kind of an unusual effect between the Butter and the Spider. And in this case, the Enchi, the, a lot of these, you know, you'd think that, you know, the Enchi would bring out a lot of oranges, and a lot of times, the Enchi, a lot of these genes don't bring in any color, just kind of scrambles up the pattern and gives you kind of a weird, kind of a scrambled up pattern on this almost a xanthic looking snake. Pretty awesome combination. So I also wanted to show you this one. This is also a Butter and she's Spider, and there's slightly different versions of the, the Butter Bee. Some of the Butter Bees have more yellow, some of them look more exanthic. And I was looking at this one, trying to figure out, all right, is this just a different version of the Butter Bee with the Enchi in it, or is the Enchi actually bringing out the color in addition to some of the, kind of the residual color of the Butter Bee? And it's, it can be a little bit variable, but I'd say this is probably the brightest guy on the snake that you you'd expect for the butter spider combination. So here is the pinstripe, and the pinstripe is usually really visually dominant. You work it in with other jeans, and most of the times you can see the pinstripe kind of shining through. And the pinstripe is one of my favorite jeans. It's a really bright gold snake, probably the brightest gold you can get. As a matter of fact, the only thing that even comes close to the pinstripe as far as gold that I've really seen is the spider. Some spiders can be super bright gold too. And usually with this pinstripe, you get this really strong stripe right down the back of the snake that's kind of the character characteristic of the pinstripe. And here's what happens if you work pinstripe into the Butterbee. Take a look at this. This is really interesting. You actually get the really strong stripe from the pinstripe, but the Butterbee actually completely eliminates all the gold from the pinstripe. That is super visually dominant to actually overwhelm the gold of the pinstripe. It's, it kind of amazed me that anything could completely wipe out all the gold of the pinstripe. And you can actually see still the little tiny pinstripes coming down the side 
like you would see in a pinstripe. That is a really amazing, really clean and super bright combination. Pretty awesome. So here is the pastel and the past I'd say this is a really nice example of a pastel. I found this over here at Morph Market. And usually the pastels can be pretty variable. Some of them can be really bright yellow and some of them can be kind of a faded out yellow. And a lot of times you'll have a like a reduction in pattern with the pastel. You can see this one's almost in the tiger stripes, which is kind of the extreme on the side of just one copy of the pastel. The pastel is co-dominant, so you can actually have two copies of the pastel. But here's what happens if you work pastel into the butter bee. Take a look at this. This is kind of an interesting effect. You get a little bit of yellow just coming in right on the top of the snake. And this is kind of an interesting, uh, the way they named this, this, they're actually naming this a queen bee and sometimes as a matter of fact if you actually buy a snake over here in morph market sometimes the genetics can confuse you or you can be tricked into buying something that you don't actually you're not actually buying because it's impossible to make so for example this one's listed as a queen bee this one has the genes spider pastel butter and lesser listed over here and i've actually seen some people say hey i bought this uh this queen bee you know or something like that they'll actually kind of tell me that the, the visual appearance of the snake and then they'll tell me the genes in the snake and I'm like all right that is impossible basically so essentially what this is if you actually look at the genes the combination of the butter and the lesser is an all-white snake with blue eyes so this could trick you into thinking all right this is actually butter and lesser in the snake and it, it's not an all-white snake so essentially what they're doing over here a lot of people actually do this when they're advertising their snakes what they'll do is they'll say this is a queen bee which is the lesser pastel spider those three genes together make the queen bee but this is uh, this is actually the butter version of the queen bee so essentially what I think this is this is the spider pastel butter and a lot of people over here if they're searching for queen bee looking for a queen bee this is actually the butter version of the queen bee it's kind of the same thing when people will list you know a coral glow and they'll also put banana in the same description as far as genetics it can't really be both in most cases, it's not a coral glow banana. It's one or the other, but you know, they're almost exactly the same, the butter and the lesser. Some people think they are the same. So a lot of people will list both genes, you know, and, and kind of assume that you know the genetics and kind of figure it out by the description. So here is the clown, and I have to say the clown is probably the king of combos when it comes to recessive genes. As a standalone gene, I'd say it's not really that impressive, but you start mixing other things in with the clown, and you can make some of the craziest combos in all of ball pythons. And this one's a really reduced version. This one almost looks kind of like, uh, it's kind of funny, I just did a, a video about the blade clown, which, you know, I, was, I pretty much had the conclusion that blade is a separate gene that's, that was originally mixed in with the clown and you separate it out and it almost looks like anchi but it's a different gene and a lot of times people have like a reduced version of clown and they'll say this is like the blade version of the clown like a reduced clown even though it doesn't have blade in it and i'd say this is kind of what we're looking at this is like this is just a clown with no other genes but this is reduced to almost the blade version of a clown it's, it's it's a little bit confusing and it's pretty interesting between the blade and the clown so here's what happens if you were a clown in to the butter bee take a look at this crazy combination that is probably one of the most amazing combos that i've seen over here the butter spider clown makes for a crazy combination for some reason the combination of spider with the clown really makes an impressive line right on the top kind of really reduces it to this kind of a jagged little line right on top pretty awesome you can see the the head stamp on here that is pretty typical of your spider combinations and your clown Clowns. Usually spiders and clowns both have really crazy head stamps and both of them together make this really interesting. It's, it's kind of weird. A lot of times you can almost read into these head stamps, you know, like you're seeing a little praying mantis or something there on the head. Sometimes you can see some really interesting patterns on the heads of some of these snakes. And usually clown combos are pretty expensive. So this one is $750 plus about $50 shipping. So it's about an $800 snake. You know, once you get into clown, it's a little bit harder because it's recessive and it's really in high demand all the clown combos and that's what pretty much drives the price up. 
So here is the fire. The fire is an interesting gene. It's actually in the black eyed leucistic complex. You breed two fires together and you get a super fire, which is an all white snake with black eyes. Pretty awesome. Fire is also allelic with a couple other genes you can actually make. The fire vanilla, which is the vanilla cream, which really scrambles up the pattern. You can also make the fire disco, which is pretty awesome. It's actually called the disco inferno. Probably two of my favorite fire combos. And here's what happens if you work fire into the butter bee. Take a look at this. This is a really interesting effect. So essentially what you're getting here is you're getting the butter bee, which is almost like an axanthic looking snake. And then usually when you mix fire into anything else, a lot of times it really whitens and lightens the background, making it even more kind of axanthic. <laughs> and you can tell, definitely tell this one has a little bit of age on too. I was just wondering, yeah, this one is actually 1,069 grams. So this one is ready to breed pretty awesome. And look at the price on this one, $150. That is pretty amazing. As a matter of fact, I'd probably buy this one just as a pet. That is really an amazing ball python. All right, so here's the last one I wanted to show you. This is the banana. And when it comes to visual dominance, I'd say probably the two main visual dominant genes are the albino. You mix anything with the albino and you pretty much get an albino looking snake. And the banana is right under albino. Usually you mix banana with anything else and you can definitely see the banana coming through. So this kind of tests the visual dominance of the butterbee. So here's what happens if you work banana into the butterbee. Take a look at this. This is pretty amazing that it almost it almost competes for the banana. I'd say it's you know the combination of the butter and the spider is almost on a level of visual dominance up with the banana. Oh probably underneath the albino. Pretty crazy combination. You can definitely see this one. You, you really get a strong influence from the banana. You can still see the banana kind of shining through with the banana color and usually with the bananas you can see kind of this banana looking head in the snake which is really awesome I love the heads on the bananas and then you can definitely see the white coming in on the side from the butterbee that is an amazing combo all right so it is time for the question of the day and Kelly asks can you feed a ball python mice only for its entire life, or do you have to eventually transition over to rats? And that is a very good question. As a matter of fact, if you look at rats and mice side by side, they're both 100% nutritionally complete for ball python. And I've actually seen some people that said, yes, they actually do feed mice to their ball pythons for their entire life, but there are some problems with feeding mice. Essentially what you do is, when a ball python hatchling is really small, usually you start out with mice because it's easier to feed them. They get a little bit picky at the beginning and the, kind of the challenge with ball pythons is kind of getting over that initial transition of a ball python hatchling coming out of the egg and getting to the point where they will really eat aggressively and usually you need mice at the very beginning and then when you transition over to rats it's a real advantage for both you and the snake I would say and when it comes to ball pythons I would say they're kind of picky eaters in the first place and if you actually were to feed a ball python like Bobby here around my neck this is Bobby my seven-year-old male he's really big and essentially what I feed him I feed him a rat every two weeks he's a really low maintenance thing I just feed him once and then make sure he has water and then he's good for two weeks it's pretty amazing and what I do is I feed him a rat just about the side the thickest size of the the belly part of the snake is pretty much the maximum usually you want to go just a little bit under that size I found you definitely don't want to go over that size and if you actually transition the weight of the rat into a number of mice to actually get that amount of food into my snake I'd probably have to feed like 12 or 15 mice <laughs> let me tell you I don't think I could feed Bobby here 12 or 15 mice in a month I just don't think that he would really take that many mice and a lot of times with ball pythons you're kind of cheering them on after they eat because yeah it's been like two months since my ball python ate and sometimes it's really hard to get them to eat in the first place and if you can actually offer them a food that is a decent size and get them to eat it's kind of like all right it's kind of a relief I don't have to feed my snake now for like another two weeks and sometimes I've actually you know with my really big ball pythons I can feed them an adult female rat which is really big and sometimes I can actually go a whole month without feeding them and they still look really good although I'd say most people usually feed about once a week and a slightly smaller than the thickest part of the belly but let me tell you it's a lot more advantageous to eventually switch to rats although you can feed them mice their entire life so that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.